Tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, my name is Shane Clark. I'm the general manager here at Neurolite, and it is uh, my privilege to bring you our final webinar of the year. Um, thanks for all the uh, attendees who have joined us today. Uh, looking forward to this one. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we uh, we run a series of webinars. Uh, we do one a month. Um, we cover all sorts of different topics. Um, they're all available on our website and the education page. Feel free to uh, to check out those. Um, today, we are talking about exterior insulation. Um, I guess that's a, a big overall um, topic that we're covering, but we're actually going to then boil it down and talk about a specific project that we've uh, worked on called the ARA Parker App um, Pilot Project. Um, we're going to uh, boil down to the um, attributes that um, we've provided for this particular project and um, cover the external insulation factor. Um, on the panel with me today, I'm joined by the letter J. I've got John Davies from Parker App Limited. I've got Joe Life from Respond Architects and John Simmons, care of Outright, our managing director. So uh, welcome to the panel. Um, thanks very much for your contribution to this project. Um, this is a little bit of a different webinar for me. It's a, a topic that I'm not completely um, all over. So it's great to have some experts on the panel talking about this. Um, so if you, any funny questions come through from me, they probably genuinely are from me. So um, looking forward to learning more on this. So um, just before we go on, we're just going to talk about um, our, our webinars, how we structure them. There's a, a Q&A section at the end. Feel free to chuck your questions into the, into the question machine at the bottom. And hopefully we've got sort of five or six minutes at the end there to run over some of your questions. Um, we'll then send this recording out with any questions we can't answer. I would like to make this interactive as possible rather than looking at four heads talking at you. So uh, we're going to run a poll. We just quickly just want to ask sort of the room, what type of house do you currently live in? Is it a, uh, is it a cold and damp home or is it, would you describe it as warm and dry or you have to wear juicy? So we'll still run that poll now. Feel free to um, exercise those fingers and put your contributions in. This is staged, Shane. That is fully staged. Your warm and dry you house there is Joe Lyth's own home, certified <laughs> passive house, guaranteed to be warm and dry and comfortable and healthy. That's not fair. Well, we need some. We need someone in the webinar to be able to tick the warm and dry box. Otherwise, the poll would look staged, wouldn't it? So, well, that's true. Well, that, that one unfortunately, the uh, yeah, panelists can't one. vote. Unfortunately, Shane. <laughs> oh, your panel can't vote. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. Oh wow. Got a lot of warm and dries in here, which is great. Um, awesome. Well, actually, right. thanks for that. About, it says there, Shane, about 40% are cold and damp, though, which is um, actually what you'd mm. expect. Yeah. It's what you'd expect, I guess, yeah, if you look at um, the New Zealand, New Zealand housing stock as a, as a whole. Yeah. Pretty good snapshot. Cool. All right. So we're on to the um, ARA Parker at project itself talking about the challenge now um i guess coincidentally i guess is that the climate change commission report just came out last week and made some recommendations and number 14 on the list was about retrofitting our existing housing stock in a healthy low energy um manner which was one of the recommendations they made so um someone wants to sort of run with the challenge to talk about this existing state house Yeah, done. We'll start at once. Um, yeah. So this this home is sitting at the ARA uh, Education Charitable Trust site out at uh, uh, in Mungary, out at the airport mm -hmm. in Auckland, and we were gifted that home to start this project. So it is a an ex uh, state home. It did not have any insulation in the walls, uh, old aluminium windows, and it did have insulation in the ceiling and the floors. So the challenge, Joe. Yeah, so essentially New Zealand doesn't really dictate much around what a healthy home should be. Um, the World Health Organization recommends between 18 and 24 degrees all, all year round, um, but obviously we need to be able to afford to do that. So this house uh, probably was never between 18 and 24 degrees in winter because nobody could afford all the heating bills. Um, there's also CO2, keeping that below 1,000 parts per million um, and keeping humidity down to around 60%. Um, so that's the kind of the 
metrics we've been working to when we work to to achieve a healthy interior environment. Um, when we're talking about emissions, we've got the um, operational emissions. So that's the amount of energy we pump into the house to keep it to a, a healthy temperature. There's also the um, embodied emissions around embodied carving and materials. Um, and using existing buildings is one of the best things we can do because we're mm. not creating new emissions because we're reusing the existing fabric, essentially. Yes, we are adding materials to that. Um, and we're going to be doing the embodied carbon reporting for this project um, when I when I get a sec. Um, but uh, yeah, reusing the existing housing stock is something we absolutely have to do to achieve our, um, our climate requirements, basically. I mean, alternatively, I mean, otherwise this this particular structure would just go to waste, wouldn't it? If it wasn't. Yep. Back if to the landfill. Challenge wasn't accepted. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, yeah, so there's interesting comments around. You know, New Zealand's very lucky; it's got a very green grid. Um, but our, as a country, our energy demands are only going to go up, and our grid can't hmm. hack or can't cope with the demands that are going to be coming. So we need to start reducing energy use. Um, irrelevant of how green that that demand is, basically. Yep. yep. And obviously, um, what, what's really important is the uh, the practicalities around the challenge. So we, we mentioned here about the inhabitants being able to stay in their home. It's probably uh, quite an important point to make. Yeah, so that that idea there is that for any home, I mean, mine's the same, the one that I'm sitting in now, it needs to be improved. But the cost of moving out, the disruption mm. in moving out, away from you know just community, schools, work, all of those sorts of things, that, that's actually a, a, a cost which should be factored in to a mm. renovation. So if we can keep the occupants, they could be tenants, but it could just be an owner-occupied building. Uh, or even a, a school building. So if we can lower the disruption on the internal side, that's a that's a big win. And so for this project, for the research that went into this, it was all about uh, working on the outside of the building as much as possible. So adding materials to the outside of the existing structure without uh, tearing out the inside. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, uh, excellent. Oh, sorry. And to add to what John is saying, um, like forty percent of the people in this have, live in cold, damp houses. Mm. Uh, there's one point six million houses, so you're talking about four hundred thousand houses need to be upgraded, which is actually what the government agencies say as well. So you can't yep. be doing it over a six month period. We have to have a methodology that can do it quickly. So because yep. there's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah. We we think that yeah, yeah. well managed and well resourced, we can do this uh, over clad overlay of insulation and and, uh, and new windows. We think we can do that in 10 days. It's yet to be proved. This one took us a little bit longer, but we were all sort of part-time and learning as we went for this uh, this very first full project. Yeah, no, look, I'm sure you guys took away some great learnings from this and, um, you know, be able to get a lot more economical with your time, you know, with, with the things you've picked up along the journey there. So, all right. Okay. Let's kick off with the the, with the, the why, I guess, um, why we felt the need to accept the challenge and why we think it's important to Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, jo a, uh, John Davies, I know you're trying yeah. to pick up well, no, this that's one. good. So, so yeah. let, let me just give a tiny bit of history on the Parker app then. So, so the, the Parker app um, name was just the name of some research that I did and completed in the end of uh, 2021. And that was to um, sort out the way that retrofitting insulation uh, onto the walls could be done and, a, and specifically with the connection from the window to the wall or window to the mm -hmm. insulation in a way that that target of the research uh, was successful it was challenging even that because typically we don't recess windows or we don't um, you know we, we, we use e2as1 details for windows mm -hmm. which are not uh, very good thermally uh, that's being, being very polite so that's that was the challenge to set up this thing as a well, well you've done the window you've done the, the the window sill that was actually the main focus and now we've got to actually roll this into a whole house and make this uh, applicable make it useful make it possible to do this for any building um, so that that is the challenge we we had to you know as I said before we were gifted this home to work on and to use as this project and of course you don't turn that down you get stuck in and we had a whole heap of um, suppliers sponsors uh, people involved and we'll name some of those uh, later on in this presentation so why you think it's important for Aotearoa uh, we've already covered that right we've got an awful lot of homes mm. so the the research 
was focused on the compliant RTA homes. So the ones like this one that had insulation in the ceiling and the underfloor. So it meets the uh, you know, Residential Tenancies Act. Uh, but there are 830,000 of those homes they have no insulation in the walls at all. So we've got wow. this incredible well, they So no, they do have insulation, but only in the ceiling right. and maybe in the underfloor. So that's 830,000 homes. And then there's a further 720,000 with no insulation anywhere, but they're owner occupied. Wow. You can choose to do what you like. Mm. Why is it yeah, important? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so why is it important? Um, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that you've got to appreciate the health impacts of living in one of these homes. Yes. Uh, it's beyond just putting a jersey on or wearing flannel. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have doctors come to New Zealand to study rheumatic fever because we're leading in this. Uh, they can't find anywhere else in the world to go and do their research. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a ridiculous place to be. Um, and uh, we, we kind of think that we are in a tropical climate, but actually we live in wooden tents that just aren't suit for, suitable for us to live in. So it's, it is a really big issue for us. And... Um, it, yeah. it actually affects the healthcare budget more than the energy budget. Mm. Yeah, that's the main reason I got involved, to be honest. I mean, my we were living in a probably a 1990s rental, um, and it might have had insulation in the walls, but it was flipping freeze and got onto like, you know, eight, nine degrees in winter and up to 35 in summer. And that's with fans wow. and heating and trying to keep it warm and my kids were getting sick. So that's why I kind of wow. went down the pathway of high performance buildings, ended up building our own passive mm. house. Um, but as I said, you know, the best building we can build is one that's already built and just improve it. Yes. So I always just love going on road trips and those fields on the outskirts of Auckland full of those poor little lonely houses waiting to be loved, basically. So I always wanted to get that lottery win, buy one of those and retrofit it. Um, and then, yeah, I got the email from GBC about this project. So perfect, basically. Yeah, and it's been fantastic to work on it. Um, yeah, so I just, I just want to improve the housing stock and make people healthy, basically. Brilliant. Oh, it's great to hear the passion coming through. Yeah. All right. We're just going to go on to, I guess, a quick description of, of how it is, um, what it is. And um, we've got a nice little image here uh, from John Davies, I believe. And he's got a 30 second elevator pitch to basically explain what we did. <laughs> All right. So on the left, existing walls. So this is straight out of the research. This has been superseded in some ways, especially around the window um, detailing, but mm -hmm. the, the idea is the same. So on the left, existing weatherboard wall doesn't have to be weatherboard. This particular building that we've just worked on is a weatherboard uh, timber frame wall. Uh, it had aluminium windows in. This window is timber, single glazed in this image. Uh, no insulation in the wall. We could try to insulate from the inside. That's disruptive, as we've, as we've said. It's actually really costly. Uh, but looking from the outside, on the image on the right-hand side, that is the new layers. So we're leaving the uh, existing good quality or in good condition weatherboards or cladding in place. Uh, there's no reason to move that off the building, really, if they're um, you know, if that's moderately weather tight, then that's pretty good. And then there's a dotted blue line uh, directly in contact with those weatherboards. So that is a new layer. That's the blue uh, Solitex Adhero from Proclima. That gives us wind tightness and water tightness and an element of um, airtight, well, not an element of, it's completely airtight, and it gives us a vapor control. So there's a lot of things going on in that layer. Outside that, in this image, we've shown a fairly skinny piece of rock wall, and there's a reason for that. So that's rock wall uh, from outright, and I'm sure John would jump in here and tell me a whole lot more about that. Um, it's a continuous sheet of insulation. Now, you can see the black lines running through the middle of the image there horizontally. Those are long screws. That is one way of installing the battens to the outside of that rock wall. Yeah. Uh, it's not what we've done for this project. So this has been superseded. And then there's new cladding on the outside. It's also a new window that's been installed. And that new window lines up directly with the insulation. And that insulation performance line. jump yeah. is massive. Oh, no, excellent. No, it's a very clear image there of, um, you know, obviously putting insulation outside the structure. Um, it's uh, quite clear that the difference between um, picture one and picture two. Uh, so the next uh, phase was the, the whole design phase, which uh, which is where you come in, Joe. You um, you basically drew this model on a, on a computer and you were able to, to look at a few of the um, factors there around 
the thermal performance? Yeah, yeah. So essentially, you don't know. You know, there's a lot of um, thumb sucking around building design, and you mm. know, you've got your calculation method scheduler. That, sticking some R values, it'll be fine. But actually modeling the building um, in the actual site it's in with the actual products and the actual conditions will give you um, a far better idea of how the building is actually going to perform and allow you to then manipulate the specification to ensure you're getting the levels of performance you, you really need before you even build the thing, basically. So it gives you much more confidence about the outcomes. Um, so I uh, went down on a Sunday and measured up this, uh, this old house Modeled it in um, in Archicad in 3D, um, and then did a produced an energy model in the Passive House Planning Package. Um, and what that allows us to do is see um, what the heating energy demand is um, in kilowatt hours per meter squared per year, um, what the overall energy demand will be, and what the overheating risk will be, because that's going to be a massive risk as we insulate our buildings. Overheating is going to be yeah, quite um, uh, an important thing to consider. I think the next slide shows some of the um, some of your findings and some of your details from your yeah. So essentially. Correct. So yeah, so the existing buildings on the right there, you can see it's 168 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year to keep it between 18 and 24 degrees. Um, wow. The proposed building is the green one. So that's down mm -hmm. to 27. So that's, I think that was 84% more energy efficient just by adding this insulation on the outside, increasing the insulation in the underfloor and the ceiling, basically. Um, and that's based on five air changes in hour of air tightness, which we're hoping to beat on Saturday. We'll see how it goes. Um, oh, nice. But this just allows us to see, you know, if we wanted to, we can increase the insulation more and try and get out of passive house. If we didn't want to, mm -hmm. we didn't need to get to this level, we can, you know, um, see how far each way we need to go. Um, it also allows us to double check you know, the windows, the type of glass we can use. So it can sometimes save you money because you don't need as much insulation as you think you might um, based on the actual results of the actual site, et cetera. Yeah, right. So I see uh, previously on John Davies' slide, he had a nice, simple two-dimensional cross-section putting insulation outside the structure. That was nice and easy. You mm -hmm. ended up with the tricky job of trying to interface it to, um, you know, because yeah. buildings aren't just walls, are they? So you have to they interface are, it to roofs and whatnot. And it's always the junctions which are the challenge, both to yeah. keep your insulation continuous and the main challenge is around air tightness. So you can kind of see where we've got um, green um, dotted lines at the head and the sill of the wall, that's where we are transitioning the air tightness from the blue um, wrap to um, the ceiling at the top there, wrapping around all those top plates and trusses and bottom cords and all sorts of things. And at the bottom there, we're continuing that underneath the underfloor, removing the existing insulation, spraying on the underside of the, um, the strand board and then insulating between those joists again. So getting those details just right. And this is just a 2D section. When you think about a corner of a building in 3D, <laughs> you've got two walls and a piece of roof meeting and all these different bits and pieces. So yeah, but um, I think John was down there a few days ago spraying goop over everything to try and get it continuous. So we'll see how it goes on Saturday. Excellent. All right. Um, so that was the modeling. Now, uh, another, I guess, important factor we've talked about, um, you know, the design and things like that. We need to control the air. Um, John, you mentioned something about that blue layer being um, controlling your, your your air in the building? Yeah, so the air barrier layer, as named here, mm -hmm. that's a really critical part to this. So, so all of the modeling that I did um, using the same software that Joe was using, so when I did this in the research, I looked at existing buildings, I looked at one in particular actually in Rotorua, and looked at how much um, air is being just uh, driven through the building because of the draftiness of that building. So that's through the walls. And so what we're looking mm -hmm. at with the blue layer is just um, stopping the drafts at, at, at extreme level. We're going for a, a deliberate air tightness um, line and connection. So that blue layer is airtight, but it also connects directly to the windows. So across that whole right. wall, and, and in that image, just so that it's very clear, this is an exposed corner of, this is not unfinished. We're actually unfinished deliberately to leave the weatherboards uh, where you can see the cursor there. And then the blue layer goes on top of that. The windows get changed. The rock wall gets added on the outside and then battens and cladding. Mm -hmm. So that air barrier is the blue layer and connected to the yep. windows. So the glass is airtight. The seals to the glass to the frame are airtight the frame to the blue layer is airtight or wind tight and that gives us that protection so if we do that to a building we really need to look at how 
we ventilate the building. And so most buildings are built with uh, windows that you can operate, that you can open and close, but that's part of the problem. You have to open and close them. So instead of expecting that to happen, we've installed a dedicated balanced pressure mechanical heat recovery ventilation system from Stevel Eltron. So that's the image on the right looking into the roof space. Uh, that's uh, just a few days ago when I was up in the roof space and we're yet to insulate across all of that space. So that ducting, it pulls air out of the wet room, so bathroom, toilet and kitchen area, and it puts fresh, uh, dry, uh, either heated or cooled air into the living areas and the bedrooms. So regardless of whether the windows are opened or closed, uh, those those areas are being ventilated. So that is the plan view on the right hand side, that same system. So you can see the red um, dots on those pipe works. So that's the extracts coming from mm. kitchen area. That's the toilet where the cursor is, bathroom to the right hand side of that, and then fresh air going back into the other sections. So uh, so how does this, sorry, John, how does the yeah. system differ to a typical um, ventilation system that's on the market? You said something about closed or balanced or something? Is it Yeah, balanced pressure. So what we're doing there is there's actually two airflows of, uh, or two airflows, two fans are in that system. So we've got one fan pulling air out of the building and ejecting that outside. So that's your wet air going out. And then mm -hmm. we've got one fan pulling fresh air in. Now those air uh, streams don't touch but in winter they give heat away to each other so that hot air going out from your bathroom and kitchen mm -hmm. areas that is the heat is given to the incoming air what that means is we can have an airtight envelope and we can still have fresh air in the building and that's really, really important. So I think what you're referring to is a very common system here as mm. the system that will pull air from the roof space that doesn't technically meet G4 uh, ventilation requirements mm. for fresh outdoor air. That's the wording in the code. Right. Uh, and it pushes okay. the, that air into the building. And it needs to go somewhere. So that is mm. the challenge with those systems. That air needs to go out through gaps and cracks and power points and light switches. And that's not mm -hmm. very good for a building mm -hmm. envelope, especially if you have insulation in the walls. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's worth, yeah. okay. no, that's it's pretty worth noting that um, positive pressure systems aren't actually allowed in a lot of building codes around the world. New Zealand's one of the outliers that still allows it um, because it's been shown to cause interstitial condensation. Because as, mm -hmm. as the building is pressurized, it pushes the warm wet air into the walls. If I hit a dew point, that will condense any the condensation and moisture within your wall build up, basically, which will be mouldy. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, right, we're just going to the next, um, the next part of the, I guess, the, the whole holistic approach here of, um, you know, making these buildings perform better. We're going to talk about the actual thermal control. We've mentioned the air control. Uh, John Simmons is going to touch on the, the thermal control. How did, we, um, how did we go about that in this challenge? Oh, well, this was the... Um... Obviously, the exciting bit, you know, for me anyway. <laughs> but we've been talking about external insulation for four or five years here in New Zealand. Uh, it's actually standard in a, like the US building code, continuous insulation mm -hmm. is actually standard. So it's not actually uh, uh, controversial. It's actually the controversial bit is that we don't do it in New Zealand. So we've mm -hmm. seen it going on to more, um, a lot of the high end or, you know, serious architects who are building uh, multi-dwelling units are using it um, but this is the first chance we have to do it on a retrofit situation what you can see in that image is the uh, insulation is going to be installed continuously on the outside but it's importantly in line with the um, uh, the joinery so that actually means that there's no thermal bridging at that point where the two junction it's actually butted up really closely together um, what is quite interesting is when you go to the property, there's two things that people notice. They don't notice the air barrier, they don't notice anything else. They notice the joinery, because it's really different from normal New Zealand aluminium joinery. It's very solid and um, right. stable, and that's because it's controlling the airflow. Um, and I'm not even a joinery salesman, but I'd like to have that joinery on my house. And the yeah. other part of it is how quiet it is. And so yeah. a subsidiary benefit of this whole process is that uh, rock wall basically absorbs noise and um, it's fully encapsulated, so there's no gaps. 
and in on top of that, the um, joinery is so um, airtight that the whole place is like a, well, just it's almost too quiet, to be honest. It actually Yes. Feels, <laughs> so that, that wall there that the install uh, crew are working on, that's facing a really busy road. I mean, really busy trucks every, you know, every 30 seconds. And you stand inside the building now, now that the windows are installed, now that the door is being able, you know, able to close it, now that the glazing is actually in. And it just is quiet. And a whole part of that is to do with that rock wall facing that um, that road there. It's it's a, it's really good. It's quite interesting watching cars go past. Quite hard to hear them. And of course, you um, I think as Beacon did a report that about a third of a building wall is timber because we love nogs in New Zealand for some reason. And of course, you have these strange junctions, which I don't know how anyone's supposed to um, insulate them. But you look at this building, you can actually see the whole thing is wrapped like we put a jersey over the, the entire thing. And the nice thing about it from an inspection point of view, you can actually sit back and go, there are no gaps. It's all tightly butted. So before we go to the next stage, we've actually checked that we've got a continuous unbroken blanket. Mm. Um, yeah. Easy to see. Yeah. And um, Very easy to inspect. Yep. That's that, that's in a nutshell in my 30 second pitch is what, is what we're Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to touch on that as well, John, it's worth talking about the fact this is a process. It's yeah. not kind of just some products. It's a sum of the entire process. So the building yeah, needs surveying yeah. before we start anything to check whether there's any, you know, weather tightness issues or damage that needs remedying before we even start the process. And then there's, because you can see, is it all blue? Great. Looks good. Is it all insulated? Great. Looks good. Clad it. So the whole process is a holistic mm -hmm. approach to look at the building all together rather than just trying to, you know, willy-nilly do change a couple of windows or add a bit of insulation here. It's considering the whole thing as one one element, basically. And, and what, what um, I've read from overseas is taking an ad hoc approach, like a whack-a-mole approach. You actually mm -hmm. get the problem elsewhere. And so you think you've done a good retrofit and all of a sudden there's mold growing in a, on a wall that was never there before. So... Just backing up with Josie, the, the holistic approach is what we need to take. Yeah. Not the idea of just going, oh, let's put some more insulation on a roof or let's put mm. a. Yeah. No, it's, it's great to see such a. Um, I mean, when, when we get on to, um, you know, thinking the people that are involved, there's just a, a huge number of people that were involved to actually provide that whole holistic approach. We weren't just putting a, um, a window vacuum in the bathroom and here you go, we can now suck up the moisture. You know, um, obviously, it went a lot further than that. So, I guess, um, yeah, just to summarise our, our little soiree today, um, the overall concept we're talking about is, is external insulation, and then um, this particular pilot on, on how you went about it, including the design, um, uh, controlling the airflow, controlling the thermal, um, all those important things. Um, using an existing state house, I thought was quite um, quite important. Um, you know, there's a lot of these around. New Zealand has a huge challenge um, to retrofit sort of 400,000 odd homes. Um, but this pilot can prove that uh, it can be done. And I think the secret is that it can be done at scale. I think you'd get a lot more sort of economies there if you were able to do, you know, 30 of these in a row. Mm -hmm. um, rather than waiting for one trade to finish so the next trade can carry on, you know. Um, and, and it meets that challenge of um, the inhabitants being able to sort of stay inside the building and um I'm, I'm not sure about the 10 day thing but um you know <laughs> as you learn and, and go on you know we're going to get that economy to scale and um you know like i say if you had a whole street full of them you'd probably get a lot more uh, time efficient so um is there any other uh things in, in the wrap-up you'd like to touch on gents before we move on to the questions Possibly that uh, that one, well, that next slide is quite useful because what we didn't talk about was the Parker mm -hmm. uh, products in there. So it's the one yeah. element that hasn't been touched. Uh, so what we created, we've created three products that help us with this. So because we've got the ability to um, uh, use different thicknesses of insulation, we need some products that cope with that thickness change. And we need um, products that will cope with the depth change from where the structure starts. So in this building, in fact, this wall and this window right there is great because we uh, changed out a stud because it was rotten. We changed the sill 
underneath that window because it was also rotten. At that point, we've removed a weatherboard at that, uh, in that area. So the starting point for the clips that you can see hanging out of the wall there, those banana clips, um, that, that starting point uh, changes. And so there's a hinge. I don't know whether that was visible in those uh, details earlier on, but there's a, a hinge within that system. So it will come out through the insulation as far as it needs to. And then the batten is connected to that. There's also a, a window cam underneath the windows, which will, uh, which quite easy um, set up to, to seat that window on, bearing in mind the window is not sitting inside the frame, it's sitting outside the frame line. And the final one there is the cavity closer at the base of wall, which allows, again, the thickness of insulation to be modified. So that's that's the Parker Wrap side of it. Um, Parker Wrap, mm -hmm. the process, is everything that we've talked about, and then we've developed some products which assist with that uh, the system. That's, that, that's great that, um, that um, answered one of the questions that's come in already on how we attach the, the cladding and things like that. So you've, you've mentioned the brackets and that, which is very handy. Yeah. Uh, I guess... Um, you know, in summary, do you, do you felt that you ticked all the boxes that you, you met most of the um, aspects of the challenge you'd set yourself? Do you feel you ticked well, the boxes there? Challenge, yeah. Well, challenge was, you know, re reduce disruption, improve thermal performance, uh, make yeah. it possible to see like the QA that you mentioned before, uh, you know, the, the, the quality assurance on site. And Joe said, you know, is mm. it all blue? Yes or no? Uh, the window is connected to that blue layer. Yes or no? Is the rock wall covering up all of that blue layer? Yes mm. or no? So the 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 QA process on site is, I mean, yes, there's lots of other little little complex bits, but overall that approach is really really simplified um, the insulation installation part. I hate saying those two words together. It's also <laughs> worth <laughs> noting that, <laughs> I mean, this this is the first one. This is, um, you know, the research. It will be complete. It will be habitable. And we're going to be aiming to monitor it to confirm what the model says, essentially, that it will be lower energy and healthier. Um, so once it's done, it'll be done. And then it's on to the next one, basically. Yeah. Excellent. I guess um, for me, what I've seen, what I, what I particularly like about the whole uh, process is that we've gone from a, a design, you know, drawn on a piece of paper, then drawn it in CAD and modeled some things. And, and now we've actually physically achieved something that you can monitor and prove the concept. So um, what do they call it? Walking the talk. Um, great to see. Great to see. Um, da -da -da -da. Got a couple of questions here from some of the um, participants here online. Um, why why rock wall insulation and not PIR? In that's, a, that's a funny question that I'll answer just to begin with. And then John can jump in who actually <laughs> supplied the insulation. We did have PIR, but you can see it in this mm. image here. So there is a strip of mm. PIR in the, uh, the, the head of that wall where it connects through to the insulation and the roof space. But um, uh, my, my answer to the question is when I did the research, I built up a physical wall, which was about half the size of that wall in the image there, and had this in our test booth at Oculus or Shelby Wright test labs. And I physically tested all of this, physically tested the performance of the elements, and I used rock wall, and I managed to, when I, when I took all the cladding off, I managed to fill it full of water, and I looked at what it did mm. when it was full of water, and it is pretty amazing how quickly it all dried. So I have huge confidence in that product to do what we need it to do for these buildings. Um, that's that's my part of the answer. John, go. And, a, and another part to consider is just on an existing building, you're not going to have a flat wall. It's not going to be a really nice right. structure. Whereas a rock wall is going to accommodate that because it's got uh, you know less compressive strength, should we say. So it's just a trade-off. Uh, you'll see that we've used the, the PIR up the top there because it's a higher performance insulation. So we were able to get a good R value out of a very narrow piece. Um, and that was because of just a design element because up there in that triangle bit, it was actually sticking out, it was protruding. So we needed to get insulation to a nice high level, um, but we wanted to have a, a nice flat wall. So so yeah, it's, it's literally up, it's uh, architect's decision. What I was quite surprised about, just as an aside, was that we didn't actually need that much insulation to get really high performance. So once we had taken a holistic approach and got the air, air barrier, uh, I think, Joe, you first modelled it with 50 mil rock wool. Um, yeah, so it's very much a kind of a balance of performance and cost at the end of the day. I think PAR is more expensive than rock wool. So um, 
but as you say, you can get a better R value for a thinner product. So if you did have that, you know, setback considerations to boundaries or anything like that, then you could get away with 30 mil PIR as opposed to 70 mil Rockwell or something like that. Um, but again, it comes down to performance. What do you want to achieve? Um, yeah. we, as you said, we, we looked at doing 50 mil of Rockwell originally, and I think we achieved just over 30 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year. And going to the 75 got us underneath that, which is essentially low energy building standard levels of performance. Um, but, you know, as I think we spoke about on site, it could be anything. It could be wood fiber insulation. It could be mm -hmm. anything like that. Once once you consider fire and uh, reaction to water, because it's essentially within the cavity. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this next question is relatively popular. Um, cost. What does yeah. it cost? Yeah. To so paraphrase the, the, that, eight we, different uh, versions. The, the, the simple part of that answer is we have not uh, finished the costings for this particular build. What we do know, just in real terms, it's it's around about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do what we've done for this building. So that's a uh, investigation design, uh, windows, ventilation system, uh, insulation, batten system, cladding and the installation of all of those elements. So it's not a cheap, but it's not, yeah, not a cheap process, uh, but if there's a way to look at that, I know that for our own, you know, our own home that I'm sitting in, we could push it off site, which it needs to, like it's a drafty misery box. We, we, we should push it off site instead, because that, that, to replace that, that would be a million plus dollars. But if I can do 150, maybe 200 for this building, slightly bigger than what we've got on screen there, uh, that's a much, much uh, cheaper and I think a better outcome because we get to use what we have and not need to move out. So is it cheap? Sorry. No. Um, hmm. Any other comments on that, team? Yeah, the other thing is that the, the research by, uh, I think they're called Burl, B-E-R-L, um, they found that for every dollar spent would give a $3 return for healthcare costs. So it's it's actually an awkward thing because it is actually something that should be being done at scale because of the impact yeah. it's going to have on. Uh, whether an individual wants to do it on their own house, that's up to them to choose. But actually, we actually need to upgrade all of the houses. Um, so this is trying to come up with a, a mass scale scheme that can be done that would lower the cost of the actual process as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, look, um, we're going poorly for time. Um, we're already eight minutes over time, but that's great. Um, there's been lots and lots of questions that have come through. Um, this is recorded. This will go out to all um, people who have registered for the, the webinar. And there's about 35 other questions here that we haven't answered, but we will answer them and uh, everyone will get a copy of all those answers. Now, uh, if you do want to know more about this particular system and this particular project, if you just want, to, you can go to this website here uh, and there's some good documentation on there, um, the details that they've shown in this um, webinar already, um, and some um, guidelines on insulation and some retrofitting guidelines, all on the um, Ara Parker app uh, website there. Um, all right, I just want to thank all the suppliers. Oh, sorry, we can do this first. That's all good. Uh, so I guess the, so the second poll is, um, look, is anyone else interested in using the Parker app system on a project? Uh, click yes if you'd like us to, to follow up. Uh, we'll, be able, we'll be in touch and see if we can do something for you. Um, if, if, if not, then feel free to tick that box as well. I'll leave that up for a couple of seconds. And I just cool. like I just want to go back. Shane, I just yep. like to that we can um, we can actually take people out to have a look at the project, uh, mm. particularly if you've got a really lovely juicy project you want us to do. Um, uh, with <laughs> lots of houses, but yeah, the nice thing about it is the site's available. We can actually take anyone there and take you through. If, if you've got people you want to work, let's let's go out and and it is literally about trying to make a snowball go down the mountain, and so we need to mm. get people on board as much energy and interest. And if other people have ideas, let's uh, talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And if no, anybody I, wants and, to um, join us uh, on Saturday morning, uh, about mid morning, we will be out on site at 46 Nixon Road uh, in Mungary. 
uh, we're doing the lower door, but a little bit of work just to finish off uh, some uh, rather large holes and one ceiling area. And then we'll be doing a blower door test with a smoke uh, yeah, smoke machine as well, just to find those last leaks. So it should be fun. You're welcome to join us. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And then uh, lastly, just a huge thanks to all the sponsors. Um, again, this is a, you know, a ma major collaboration between all the um, sponsors, suppliers, um, people who provided their service. Um, it's not just a, I think it sort of highlights the whole holistic approach and, you know, all the partners joining together and creating a much, much better performing building out of the yep. existing housing stock. So. Shane, major one in there, install, right in the middle there, install insulation. They took uh, Joe's design, they took my ideas. And so Joe from Respond Architects above that, but install insulation. So those guys were out there learning the system, learning the install. Uh, they installed the Proclimber at Hero. They installed the Stark windows. Uh, they've installed the outright continuous insulation, the rock wall. Uh, they've installed the batten system from Parker Rep. And I think that's about it. But those guys have just learned so much about the system and, and really enjoyed the learning because it's a little bit different to what they would typically uh, than what they would typically do. Yeah. So Fiber Cement yeah. Solutions have supplied all of our cladding. Uh, as well so and then wall to wall is not named here so wall to wall uh, in, installers uh, are just finishing or just finished yesterday the uh, installation of the cladding um, so you yeah, really appreciate all of the support yeah. um, right across the board for this project it's been great excellent all right well um thank you panelists thank you for your time and your input uh you know a bit of time to practice these things believe it or not um Hopefully we've answered some of your questions. There's a lot more questions for us to answer um, and we'll come back to you. Anyone who registered this will get a recording plus a list of all the, the Q&A and things like that. Uh, thank you to the three Js again for being on the panel today. Um, and uh, yeah, compliments of the season to you all and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.